Welcome. Welcome to the 2014-2015 Scribbler Reception. Today is the culmination of many tireless hours of work by the Scribbler staff. I'd like to welcome the many guests that are assembled here. First, welcome to the published authors, poets, artists, and photographers that grace the page of this year's Scribbler. Next, I would like to welcome the patrons of the Scribbler that are listed on page 36 of this year's issue. Without their financial contributions, this magazine would not be possible. I'd also like to welcome the many sponsors that year in and year out support the Scribbler. This group is made up of school clubs, private citizens, and school employees. They are the reason we can publish in full color for the second year in a row. I'd also like to welcome the faculty, staff, and administration of Norris Town Area High School, along with the administration of Norris Town Area School District, and the parents and invited guests. At this time, I'd like to call Mr. Jeff Smith and Dr. Janet Samuels to the podium, please. And Mr. Yeah. Smith, your official copy. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. I would like to call members of my staff to the podium. Um, Jacinia Soto. Janelle Edgar. Bailey Schulte, Tyler Sammons, Jennifer Kennedy, and Lydia Haggard. And now I'd like to call Jennifer Kennedy and Bailey Schulte to the podium to make the presentations. photography. Um, it's the front cover and it goes to Kira Rodriguez. Kira's cover artwork is um, two lovebirds on a uh, branch, and Tyler's second place is on the back, and it's a white cat in a jack-o'-lantern bucket. <laughs> <laughs> At this time, I'd like to call Jessinia Soto and Janelle Edgar to make further presentations. contest winner goes to Alec Proyato, but unfortunately he's not here right now. Uh, Mr. Schaefer, could you read his poem for us? Sure. <laughs> it's called A Soldier's Dying Thought. Reluctantly they marched to war, afraid to lose their lives. They feared this possibility, abandoning their wives. As they came closer to the fight, the dead lay on the ground. They marched right over top of them, but then one made a sound. The soldier on the ground cried, help, with three holes in his shirt. Twas just a kid shot carelessly, a young face full of hurt. 
They tended to their fallen friend, trying hard to save him. A bullet was stuck in his heart. His chances seemed quite slim. Then suddenly there was a pause. The distant bombing ceased. Apparently the war was won. There'd be no more deceased. Hey kid, guess what? It's done. We won. The enemy has given up. The boy looked up at him, confessed, eyes staring to, starting to tear up. Just look around at this mass grave that we are sitting in. With all the death that's in this war, how can there be a win? At this his breath began to slow until his will gave in. The soldiers knew the, bo the boy was right. How can there be a win? Okay, and I'd like to present this year's uh, short story winner. And uh, this goes to Jada Dickerson. And her story, its name is Diner, which begins on page four. Um, and Jada, would you mind reading your story for us? <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> it was tradition for the group of friends to meet at the diner every Wednesday, although recently that tradition had been broken more often than not. It's just, people were just so busy, busy, busy. I'm sorry you can't come again next time, for sure. But this night, the night before graduation, they had to meet together at least one last time. Sure, they had a whole summer to hang out, but this, were, this would be the last time they were in high school together. It was special, or at least that's what Alex said. He always came up with the ideas. As usual, when they arrived, there were few customers, um, none, but that just meant the group of friends wouldn't have to worry about being too obnoxious. They sat in the booth to the left side of the diner, near the exit. Beatrice and Nathan sat next to each other, Nathan's arm wrapped around her shoulders, pulling her in so she was squished next to him, and Sue and Nova were across from them, a comfortable distance apart. Alex pulled up a chair from another table and sat in front. Man, this is it. Can you believe it? Beatrice said while they were waiting for their waitress to come back with their, with their drinks. She rolled her ruby lips together in a moment of contemplation. She was looking out the window at the black starless night sky. It was the same color as the ringlets of her hair that bounced around her bronze face and got tangled in her large golden hoops. After this, we're just free. It feels kind of terrifying, she ended, looking back at everyone. When her gaze landed on Alex, he felt his heart flutter. When her gaze landed on Nathan, he puckered his lips and gave her a loud speech. <laughs> and if you want to find out what happened after that smooch, you'll have to continue reading the diner. At this time, I'd like to recognize the artists and the photographers that are featured in this year's Scribbler, and if we turn to page nine, if you have a copy in front of you, or you can look on somebody else. Page nine is a painting by Bailey Schulte. Please stand up, Bailey. Be recognized. <laughs> on page 14 is a painting by Michaela Campbell. And also on page 17, another painting by Michaela Campbell. On page 19, Andy Fonts with his computer drafted image. Again, pa Bailey uh, appears on page 20 with her painting of a sunset. On page 25 is a photograph by Brian Ascension. And on page 27, there is a drawing by Alan Kelly. And now we will have some uh, poetry readings, starting with Victoria Raza. she finds happiness in the way the words tell a story. She is fascinated by the endless amounts of words. She revels in the different kinds. The ones that can make your heart heavy with pain, I hate you, but others that can fi fix it back up like glue, I'm sorry. 
Words are really the strongest force because in a miserable world she escapes through words. Next we will have Kelsey Lintelsmith reading The Watchtower. Standing, watching, praying for darkness to come to sight, for darkness to tempt him to mind. Next, we will have Lydia Haggard reading Behold. Behold, a new day comes away from the smoke. Away from the ashes fluttering in the air like broken angels' wings. Flames hiding her who candidly spoke her beliefs. Oh, the anger of the people was on her. But now the wrath of the one is on us, ready to send us to the flames where there is no death. Woe to us, this disturbing generation. The candlestick of patience burns lower, lower, lower. Will we ever learn to fear? These pitiful people play as if it'll always be okay, but... A new day comes. Alone in the Dirt by Greg Sontag. He pushed me down again, breaking an unspoken oath. As it all rose in a fog, I choked on tears and loathe. Never stops, bruised eyes, constant makeup, a happy disguise. Down again like a rag doll, I've lost the strength to get up, I just stumble and fall. Bloodied I lay here, but I've become tough, I slip from consciousness, but I finally had enough. So, uh, is Shane Hammer here? Shane Shy, I guess. Mm -hmm. How about Sherelle Harrison? She's shy, too. Lauren Whitley reading Love Is. Love is. Love is like the sun, vibrant, full of life, happy, seeming to shine brightest after the darkest of days. Love is like the snow, white, bitter, the farthest thing from warm and beating. Love is like the wind, constant, chilly, refreshing, blowing away umbrellas, pesky bugs, and lost feelings. Love is like the rain, wet, wicked, wild, starts off a few drops, and before you know it, there's a storm. I'm smiling the whole time. These are all so good, aren't they? <laughs> I could read them over and over again, but I won't. I've seen them so many times. I had a dream last night that no one showed up. <laughs> Hannah Masters, are you here? How about Cameron Duncan? Oh, look, I get to read my poem. <laughs> it's called Portier Secrets. It was a simple portiere curtain. It measured only a few feet across the doorway, but covered much, or so I was told. Orange, velvety material with fancy tassels at the bottom edge. It was supposed to be pretty, but it wasn't. Grandma stressed that it remained closed at all times. But what was hidden back there, beyond the pantry? Was it an antique break front with priceless china, or Grandpa's picture hung with black bunting, a safe containing the family fortune? Maybe an unused room reserved for special occasions. My older brother dared me to take a peek. I saw faded green window shades and white sheets covering outdated furniture, an empty birdcage and stand, dust on the radiator covers, darkness. I touched the wall just inside the portiere near the light switch. It was soft and raised and felt like velvet. The texture took me back to 1936, the year my mother was born. Thank you. 
Maybe I should have written about last night's dream. But <laughs> is Taylor Walker here? How about J.C. Ulmer? And next we'll have Chad Capelli reading Earth. you with a protected atmosphere and climate as comfortable as a grandmother's quilt from agriculture to architecture with mountains piercing its way to outer space our welcoming earth never, never ceases to amaze us next we'll have Sydney Yudzinski, reading Love is in the Air. Love is in the air. I feel your presence nearby me, my neck starting to burn up. You make me so nervous, but I don't know how to get it out. I want to say so many things to you, but I can never get the words out right. I just keep, in think I just keep thinking in my head, love is in the air. I don't know why I like you. I don't even know how we ever came across. You just bring a light into my day, especially when things aren't going right. You don't even have to look my way. Just the sight of you makes my heart melt. I'm slowly falling in love. Love is in the air. You don't even know me. I guess that's all right. I don't ever expect you to like me, so I'll be okay. I just hope one day I'll stand beside you and you look my way. Love is in the air. I see you with your girlfriend, much to my dismay, so I'll just turn my head and go on my merry way. Love is in there. Melanie Balon. The Inner Struggle for Control by Chris Rivera. struggling right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you know me, this poem will not surprise you at all. Okay. All right. I like wontons. Mushrooms are blue. If you see a toaster, mice will kill you. Keyboards are gray, and mud is sublime. This poem is taking up my damn time. The soup is creamy, and the cartoons are black. My breath kind of smells. Please give me a tic-tac. Two chains is purple, and the camels can laugh, but horses will ask to take a bath. The banana may cry, and the sheep may die, but TVs are all the same inside. Don't steal from an elf who can't reach the top shelf, and please don't offend a snail's pride. None of it made any sense. <laughs> sense to me, Chris. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Kayla Holman. Okay. Yeah. Everybody has their own interpretation of poetry, correct? Yes. At this time, I'd like to call Tyler Sammons and Lydia Haggard to the podium to make some thank yous. Good afternoon. I would like to recognize the sponsors of this year's Scribbler, the Norristown Athletic Department, the Cancer Awareness Club, DECA under the direction of Mr. John Shaw, Bud and Lois Denner, Dr. Albright Malfi, Dr. Janet Samuels, Mr. and Mrs. Brian Kennedy, Miss Ann Rorick, and the Soto family. And I would like to recognize the patrons for this year's Scribbler. Miss Baker, Mr. Banks, Mrs. Bartlett, Miss Bilo, Mrs. Belinsky, Mrs. Brown, 
Miss Boyle, Mrs. Custer, Mrs. E. Raiden, Mrs. Failer, Mr. Geisler, Miss Goodman, Mrs. Grimes, Miss McGuire, Miss McClure, Mr. Morris, Mr. Mueller, Miss Pierce, Mrs. Sawyer, Mrs. Schaefer, Mr. Stalker, Mrs. Stalker, mm -hmm. Mr. Strobel, Miss Venezia, and Mrs. Walker Holmes. Copies that are on the side table are for the patrons and sponsors. If you would like to purchase an additional copy or another or, or a single copy, they're on sale for five dollars, and I'll be I'll take your money right over here to the side. <laughs> Isn't that what I should do? Okay. No project of this magnitude simply happens overnight. The scribbler staff and the advisor have been working on this issue since just after last year's reception. It's a work of love. The scribbler staff and the advisor love putting this magazine together, but there are many people behind the scenes that make it possible. First, the parents of the staff members are to be applauded. And the wife of the advisor, too. I'd like to thank Mr. Schmalbach for hosting today in the library. I'd like to thank Mr. Christ and the Norristown Area School District Graphics Department for publishing this. I'd like to thank Mrs. Reed downstairs for taking all my phone calls and making all my announcements and all the other things she does. Mr. Fry for uh, building maintenance. Ms. Rorick in the um, financial office. Dr. Samuels and Mr. Smith. I'd like to thank Mrs. Bartlett and Mrs. Stocker for helping set up today. And I'd like to thank you for coming and supporting the students of Norristown Area High School. Thank you very much, and have a great... Oh. Hey, Mr. Schaefer. Oh, yeah. Hi. Okay. Um, There's a conspiracy here. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Schaefer, wait a second. Uh, we all like to thank you for your dedication to the service. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Oh, and Mr. Schaefer forgot to mention his lovely photo. Go to that page. Check it out. Thank you very much. Help yourself to some snacks and some water. And if you'd like an additional copy, I'll, I'll be willing to sell you on the side. Thank you very much for coming. Like four pieces of bread. There you go. Multi-sound.